Extreme storms, hotter seasons. With a specialized degree in climate, he's pioneering the way we look at climate and how it affects our weather. Now, climate specialist Jeff Berardelli. In today's climate classroom, by now you've probably seen the countless headlines about the giant sargasm seaweed invasion headed for Florida. These sargasm blooms have been booming over the past several years. Today we'll discuss the science behind these booming blooms and if it's a threat to the Tampa Bay area. 2022 was the biggest bloom that we had ever seen, and then 2023 is shaping up to be uh, about the same size, if not bigger. As a USF research professor, Dr. Brian Barnes monitors the health of our oceans. Besides the usual suspects like red tide and blue-green algae, sargassum has recently become a yearly concern. Nowadays, these blooms extend 5,000 miles clear across the Atlantic, before 2011, we never saw anything like this. And then in 2011, something happened whereby we started seeing, being able to see it in mass from satellite. Since then, Barnes says each year the blooms are getting bigger. Sargasm is naturally occurring, and in moderation, the seaweed supports abundant marine life. But over the past few years, the extreme outbreaks are inundating beaches in the Caribbean and in South Florida, making for an eyesore at first and then a smelly, toxic mix as it decays. Now, scientists are not exactly sure what triggered the 2011 event past a threshold. Likely, it was a confluence of environmental events. But one thing that stands out in the research? An overabundance of nutrients. The, uh, the fertilizer could be coming from areas like uh, the watersheds from you know, the Congo River in West Africa, the Orinoco and the Amazon, and then also the uh, Mississippi in North America and so forth. And people that, that track this have, have looked at the nutrient concentrations coming out of those rivers. You see higher amounts of nutrients. And this is confirmed by a recent study which found a significant spike in sargassum nitrogen over the past four decades, supporting harmful algal blooms. While this seems clear, the contribution from climate is not. We know that the waters are warming. Is that having something to do with the increase in sargassum? It's not as straightforward as you think. Some algae are pretty much the warmer the better, uh, and they just thrive on, on super hot temperatures. Sargassum aren't there. So if climate change is having an impact on sargassum, it's likely more indirect. Now, there is some research that suggests that changes in ocean currents and dust from Africa may be factors. One bit of good news? Sargassum is typically not a threat to the Bay Area. So the West Coast, we're slightly protected. Is that because the loop current takes the takes the sargassum north? It doesn't often break off and head eastward towards the Tampa Bay area? Yeah, that's exactly right. And this is a surface floating macroalgae. So it's just hanging out and doing whatever the surface ocean is doing. So the loop current brings it in from the Yucatan into the Gulf of Mexico. It makes that U-turn and then heads out uh, in the, through the Straits of Florida. So between Florida and Cuba. The take home is this, whether it's sargasm, red tide, blue-green algae, oxygen dead zones, or dying seagrass and manatees, it's all related to the endless flow of nutrient pollution into our waters. And until we fix that, algae blooms will continue to boom. For more Climate Classroom, go to WFLA.com. Jeff Berardelli, 8 on your side.